Welcome to the Pure Joy Podcast, a bi-weekly exploration into what brings people joy. Uh, here on the Pure Joy Podcast, we're going to be interviewing friends, community members, just really anyone that is a part of you know uh, our sphere of influence. They don't even need to be here on on Twitch, our normal streaming platform, but uh, you know any any parts of our community, um, in an attempt to spread some some love and and joy just to get out of our normal bubbles and spread some love um my first guest uh in what will hopefully be a, a successful long string of guests um is one of those friends and community members um he is a long time a long time friend we've met in person we've had some drinks um his name in the social strata here on Twitch, TikTok, and, and all of the, the social medias are um is Toxic Killer50. But today we'll be referring to him by his his real name, which is Matt. So we will be switching over there now. Here we go. Hello Matt, how's it going today? Hello everyone. How are we doing? Fantastic. Let's get that a little closer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh how was how yeah. was your day? Just uh, in general, around this. Uh, yeah, it wasn't so bad. Um, woke up this morning. We went to church. We did our shopping. Filled up my car with gas. That's expensive. Um, did a short, short episode of my own podcast because uh, I was trying to watch a hockey game. <laughs> yeah, I caught a little <laughs> bit of that. Hockey game. Had dinner, um, and you know, here, here we are. Um, we we spent a lot of our day yesterday um drinking what we're gonna talk about <laughs> uh but uh but yeah no it was, it was a good sunday um i have a three-day weekend so i'm looking forward to maybe staying up a little late tonight to play some video games and um you know i'm excited to talk about stuff that we don't always talk about when i'm live or in social circles um i like doing these it, it definitely gets um gets people to know the more personal side of me where you know you and i have the advantage of living very close to each other but some people that watch me don't so this is just another way i can get to show them another side of me and and they can get to know the the person behind the streamer a little bit better yeah absolutely that's exactly why i i want to do it because you and I, we've gotten the opportunity to go meet up. We've gotten some beers. We've mm -hmm. gotten some barbecue, um, some some drinks. We've met we've met each other's partners. We've we've had a good time together. We don't always get that opportunity to um, do that with uh, a lot of the people that we meet here. Um, and also, hopefully, it can maybe inspire some people if they've never tried some of the things that we'll talk about maybe maybe they're inspired to go out and do it uh in the case of our you know subject today in a responsible manner but go out and 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 and, and try some of these things and experience them um for sure so yeah um i wanted to start with a little uh a, a different little bit before we dive on into our subject um for the day mm -hmm. uh and that is just like a small joy what is something today that has brought you joy um maybe you didn't find it in the moment but looking back on it hopefully now um the new york rangers did not go down three to nothing in their playoff series against the carolina hurricanes okay that brought me much that joy. brought you much joy the new york rangers <laughs> didn't go down i like it <laughs> they wanted they won a game they're back in the series um and i'm very happy that's fantastic so. yeah you you're uh you consume lots of of hockey right yeah i do a ton um i play fantasy hockey um i play ice hockey um i watch a lot of hockey uh i am like a hockey fanatic this one. um and uh my team overachieved this year they were not supposed to make the playoffs they did they were not supposed to win in the first round they came back from being down three to one uh, three games to one in their first series and one in seven against the Pittsburgh Penguins. They are not billed to beat the Carolina Hurricanes, and they're now down two to one. So now they're starting to win games against them. So it's been a it's been a good year for my hockey team. I did a, a hockey podcast and I had them finishing in sixth place in their division, um, and they ended up finishing in second. So I don't they proved me wrong. Proved you wrong. Okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> 
that uh okay so so you're I, I yeah I've, I've heard a lot about you uh you being into hockey are you into other sports like when hockey is off season do you get um, into football I, or baseball watch, as much um, so I, I dabble in like a little bit of baseball um hockey is like the main sports sport I do watch um I don't really watch much football except for the Super Bowl um like honestly for me sports wise it's it's pretty much hockey a little bit of baseball um and i watch like the super bowl i don't watch basketball at yeah. all um so if i'm not you know if it's not hockey season my sports stuff is kind of you know lessened that slows down and you know gaming and dungeons and dragons and other things kind of you know take front seat to front seat to hockey when hockey season's not going that on, makes sense so. that makes sense uh awesome cool well cute that's fantastic um all right so then on to our larger topic of the day um which is what in your overall life brings you your joy sure so i i thought about doing streaming for this mm -hmm. um but you know i really obviously i think you know we have a lot of the same community members that watch us so i wanted to kind of maybe do something that is outside of that realm yeah because i think it's pretty obvious that streaming brings me joy um i don't really need to sit on a podcast and say that no sure i mean i totally <laughs> expect one day some yeah. people to come on here and talk about like aspects yeah. of streaming that do bring them joy and yeah. i'm looking forward to talking about that but i am happy that we are not starting there at the beginning Thanks. so for for me the the one thing i did pick um i'm like a huge craft beer fanatic um not everybody comes to the friday streams um to watch legos which is you know it's fine that's kind of the only day where you would really get like a glimpse of that okay because like the whole time we're building legos we're pretty much drinking craft beer um and, and i have started to notice like people will like they're asking me like hey what are you drinking on like because like then they're curious because i'll just leave the can kind of like sitting yeah in, in within camera view and the just just the right with the logo <laughs> facing camera yeah. i like it what are you drinking what are you drinking oh, uh, this? Um, yeah this this is you know um so yeah it's it's oh it's been a hobby of mine since college um i for some of you that don't know, I just dropped a Pokemon card. Um, for some of you that don't know, um, Chef Buddha and I actually went to the same culinary school. It's how we met. Um, so my love for craft beer started as I was getting my minor in food and beverage management. Mm -hmm. um, and it started in this class we had to take called beverage appreciation. I will leave your mind to figure out what that class was, but it was Never practically guess. all drinking. Um, we literally would taste a different kind of alcohol every day. So like one day we'd we'd come in and there'd be like eight bourbons waiting for us to like, we're gonna do bourbon today, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, and then one day it was like craft beer and one day it would be vodka and one day it would be, um, so that's kind of where it started. Um, I, obviously it's a very expensive, <laughs> it's not a cheap hop. Sure, yeah. I mean, I'm into very expensive hobbies. Yeah. I don't understand why I'm this way. Um, I hate that I'm this way sometimes because like I always joke like they're, they're like, well, what do you do in your free time? I'm like a lot of very expensive things and it's not by choice. It's just what I like. It's my it's my tastes. Um, I can't help it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I not only enjoy drinking craft beer, um, I collect it. I sell it. I, I keep, um, you know, rare and hard to find beer at home okay. um, to bring the beer shares with me. Um, I, I absolutely love going to beer shares. That's what we were doing yesterday. Um, we had a beer share with, uh, it was a smaller one. It was like six or eight people. Um, I brought a very hard to acquire bottle that they only make 900 of a year that we won a lottery for this year. Um, yeah. So, you know, um, and I just really enjoy sharing that and allowing other people to experience, um, you know, those things along with me. It's been a really cool hobby. It is a lot of drinking. I get that. It's not the healthiest hobby in the world, but it does bring me a lot of joy to, um, to kind of experience what different breweries make. Um, you know, every brewery has different barrel age beers and different stouts mm -hmm. and different lagers. And it's, it's just cool to kind of, um, 
see and travel and experience the uniqueness that each of these artists in their own right right yeah like, definitely they, they what they what they make for you know people to enjoy because it's all it's all kind of you know it's a little different yeah you mentioned um some traveling where is have you gone anywhere like overseas to find craft beer have you where's the farthest or like coolest places you've gone to uh so or when experiencing I, these you know craft beers i have a bucket list trip i want to go to belgium um very badly uh to go to the monasteries over there that produce beer um and also to go to the most famous um sour brewery maker in the country um they are they're called cantian um they are very hard to get um they really don't uh import many beers over here um so really the only place you can buy it is in europe um and you have to like bring it back with you um so like that's a bucket list item for me uh the furthest i have probably traveled um within the u.s um i mean we go to iowa quite frequently to pick up beer releases um i have flown to florida for business uh and made it a point to go to some of my favorite breweries in tampa and i've gone so far as to send myself a styrofoam shipper yes. back and and care send myself a styrofoam shipper to my hotel go to the breweries that i want to go to buy the to-go beer i want bring buy bubble wrap mm -hmm. pack it mm -hmm. myself and then check it on the way home um i've done that like numerous times um you know just because there's just beer that i can't get in certain places yeah, i can't get here yeah. that i can get other places i have found um, we go to st louis too so st louis is another place we love to go i've had a few you know when we're talking craft beers we're talking like localized beers right like is mm -hmm. that that's like our like localized more rarer beers yep uh yeah yeah yep. i've had some more localized to michigan i've had a lot of the michigan crafts um mm -hmm. One of my favorites here in the city is a seasonal beer that Four Hands does uh, called the Chocolate Milk Stout. Um, they are in St. Louis. They're in St. Louis. If you ever wanted, if you ever wanted to go, um, there are some very good breweries in St. Louis. It's probably one of the best um, beer cities um, in the Midwest, um, and that that's outside of Anheuser Busch. Um, there's probably about yeah yeah seven or seven or eight um seven or eight outstanding um craft breweries in st louis and for us um it's only about a six hour drive yeah so i was uh very I spent doable in a week high school in uh mm -hmm. in st louis uh it's where i met uh laying um yeah i'm i'm here M. tell me your order i mean if you can find the chocolate milk stout from four hands and bring it back that's always a good one just because like i look whenever i go into you know anywhere um because i you know i enjoy a like when we when we we in our house we talk about like cold beer clock right um we I should have opened one <laughs> in retrospect. I might actually go do that. I have the I have my fridge. We over cracked there. our last two last night. Definitely crack Tell one though. Story. Definitely I'll crack one though. Um when you know, when we talk about cold beer o'clock in our house, um you know, we're talking about cracking open like a high life. We're talking about cracking open uh, uh, a PBR because it's a it's a quick drinking beer. It, it tastes fine enough. It tastes good enough. I've I've grown to love them. Um, and, you know, you can drink a few of them real quick and it's cold and it's nice. And then you get that feeling. You get that that like nice, you know, buzz or or whatever um in the opportunities where i get to taste these these craft beers uh we'll also get another one i can't remember off the top of my head but they're like really flavorful and whenever they talk about their flavor they're really good um but i you know i, I drink i drink one and, and the, the experience and the taste is so different that like you know when i was growing up we would say like we don't like you know i, I people like i don't like beer because they don't like 
the party beers. They didn't like Bud Light, and that is fine. No one really likes, like, no one loves Bud Light. People do, but, you know. Can't, can't drink all day if you don't drink Bud Light. Sure, though. exactly, exactly. It's a if day drinking beer. If, exactly. If I'm going to start at 8 a.m., I'm not drinking. No, uh, not drinking no, those. no. You can't drink craft beer all day. <laughs> you can't Certainly do it all day. not. You'll die. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, it's such a different experience um, drinking the the these beers um when you I, I i had a thought pretty much you know all week thinking about this topic and and how to approach it i was curious when you and mm -hmm. mary beth your you know your wife uh for for chat and the, those of you know us that don't know when you and mary beth mary got beth, aka mrs toxic, AKA mrs. toxic <laughs> um yeah when you two got married did you have like a specific craft beer at the wedding so our um two of our really good friends own uh one of our favorite breweries in um waukegan which is like 30 minutes from our house oh, that's amazing um yeah so we really liked uh this uh new england ipa that they made um it was called uh it's called confirmed fire um and so they um were nice enough to uh set aside i think like five cases of oh it oh my goodness um, so that we could so that we could have that as like our signature beer at the wedding um and then that was their wedding present so like we went to go try to pay them for it and they were like no 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 oh. like you know like we we were like fighting them to pay for it and they're like no you're you're not paying for this like it's you know this is your wedding present like you know we we, are, we really appreciate you guys and um you know it, it's it's really cool um that we're friends with several brewery owners and you know we um it's really neat that we get to be a part of that community because it's a really um tight-knit community and everybody's always looking out for everybody else um and you know we've met we've had the opportunity to just meet some like really incredible people um through what many people would consider a very unproductive much like streaming um because a lot of people don't understand yeah, it, that yeah. It something that a vast majority of people consider a very unproductive um hobby or career well, or i mean that's the thing uh, about you know, like uh, for me about hobbies is that it is it's it's they're all so productive in their own right if we look at like i don't know 90 percent of hobbies uh they're all productive in their own right because the, the the time in which you right. sit down and get to spend with uh these things uh in your own time is always it's that good relaxation time or that good like thinking time or the good just like not thinking time um it's all like very right. important uh to a healthy balance of, of life uh, even if you don't find that in in alcohol or um you know things things along that nature um so well i i'm also now curious did you what uh what what beer did you grab to to drink this evening <laughs> so it is from a brewery in buffalo grove called liquid love um, it is a pina colada fruited sour ale with pineapple, coconut, and cherries. Yes. It's very good. Yes. It's called it's called Bitch Front Madness. Bitch Front Madness. I I I'm in love. I love it. Um I think man, I think that it only makes sense that I grab a craft beer. <laughs> I mean, it just, it's, it's okay. like the most, I'm okay, cool. All right. I think, all right. Give me like a five, give me like a five minute break. Uh, we have a, like a, a spot right next door to my house. That is incredible. Um, with beer. So I will be back. In I can, I can. Oh, time. nice. You got, got something already. Oh yeah. 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 Super close. There you go. What did you get? So the brand I was talking about is Pipeworks. Uh, I like I like pipeworks. Yes, I'm a big fan. Um, I got a. It's called Friend with Two Boats. It is a passion fruit, orange juice, and coconut ale. That actually sounds really good. I'm gonna have to see if I can find it. By something us. tasty. Pipeworks blows me away every time I taste it. I'm just like, the flavor is stellar. I really like their. I really like their IPAs. Mm -hmm. Lizard King and um, Ninja versus Unicorn. Um, what is your favorite kind of beer? Like 
favorite brewery or like style style of beer um i'm a huge fan myself of of ipas in general i like to like a hoppy bite um but i also found a lot of love with like irish lagers recently we've been going out and drinking at irish pubs and getting like fish and chips and stuff and the lagers um have been on point uh i am a huge fan of um the pastry stout category specifically okay. um uh my teeth do not like them because they're absolutely loaded with sugar um but like think of it like a dessert except it's beer i want to say so I've for had example, a couple. so for example we we brought one yesterday that had um maple syrup coffee uh and like cacao nibs right or like some of them might have cinnamon and you know things that you'd put in a dessert and they're usually themed so it might be like a cinnamon roll stout or like um mm -hmm. you know cookies and cream ice cream bar mm. or berry pie stout that may have like you know raspberries and blueberries oh the one we brought yesterday had blueberry coffee and maple syrup Ooh. it was quite good like the, like the like topping of a pancakes. pancake exactly that sounds so yeah. good so i am very much my teeth and my dentist absolutely hate <laughs> that i drink those but i am that is very much like my favorite um style of yeah. beers um i i love the barrel aged adjuncted um stouts uh that would be my top um but really like i'm not picky like the only real beer i don't like to drink is i'm not a fan of like the smoked beers the roush beers where they like almost like a like a peat mossy scotch where it you could taste the smokiness interesting i um, almost grabbed I do not like that style i at all. almost grabbed it was a smoked <clears throat> lot uh the smoked stout uh and it looked like it was aiming to be like a sweet smoked stout which sounds like it bridges the two things you like like and hate in one beer yeah i can't for whatever reason um like i drink i drink like scotch and bourbon as mm -hmm, well mm -hmm. um and i i cannot drink the islay scotches oh. um, because i literally feel like i'm drinking an ashtray Man, I so i it. prefer the I prefer the bourbon-y scotches like the Highland and the Space Eyes mm -hmm. that are a little bit more neutral and they taste much more like uh bourbon. See when I'm um, for whatever reason it's too the 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 smoky um flavor, mm -hmm. like that particular way that they make it, it literally tastes like I'm drinking an ashtray and it's it's gross. Like it's just it's not good for my taste buds. When uh when I go out and I'm like looking for an experience with drinking, um, which does like, especially living in the city um, uh, of Chicago, you know, massive city. It's so easy to find an experience with whatever you're looking for. Um, and so when I do when I do go out for uh, a drinking experience, I look for those like like I'm licking the bottom of a of a burned boat scotch you know what i mean like salty yeah. and like so smoky that i feel like i'm smoking yeah, at the I moment can't. i uh, can't like i need the i need the bourbon ones most... or the ones aged in sherry casks yeah or... i mean i do i love i love the bourbon and i love uh I'm, i just like i've yet to find a bourbon that i'm not into i like them i like them all but for like so many different reasons um yeah um, so you do, you say, you, you, do you, have you ever made craft beer? Um, it sounded like it's, uh, I've helped people make it, mm -hmm. um, when I was, go oh God, probably like in my early twenties at this point, um, <laughs> one of my coworkers at CDW, um, was in a homebrew club so like one weekend we made uh i don't know a 10 gallon batch of like citra hop ipa and we all got like a case of it and it actually came out really good um you know we helped measure the ingredients and you know boil it and we pretty much did the actual brewing work mm -hmm. 
um once it's done brewing and it's in bottles there's you know you're waiting you, you have to it's a lot of waiting so you make it and you gotta wait for it to ferment and then you gotta you know you gotta carbonate it and you know so it's like in, it's like two hours or you know it's like four hours of work to actually make beer but then you're waiting for weeks for it to ferment um in a you know in a little carboy or you know whatever little glass um but yeah i've helped make it before um i know that um, i don't make it on my own though uh, i i know that you guys are interested or you know you're finishing out your your basement what we can see behind you at the moment is is the good finished side of the basement right um yeah. uh, is there you know with that with that new added finished space is there any new are you you know is is that a thought would you like to have a space to to create your own brews so i have a we have a bar already uh -huh. um say like great the bar behind the couch yes <laughs> um there is an unfinished space behind that oh, okay so this is like half it's a long basement and then there's the other half over got there you behind the wall we've got all of our you know furnaces and stuff like that um we were talking the other night um because we want to run plumbing for that bar anyway at some point because mm -hmm. it's just a dry bar right now and there's even a spot for a sink and I, I find it very stupid that there's a spot for a sink but there's not a sink um <laughs> so we talked about there is more than enough space on the wall behind the bar um to put like a a long refrigerator and then put tap handles behind the bar mm. it would be very easy to do it wouldn't even have to be a long tap line because it's like a foot so literally it would just go in the wall down and then you know boom mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and there's nothing like a beer from a tap like yeah nothing like it so we talked about that um i don't know that i would ever want to brew my own it just it takes it's a lot it's <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of squeeze for not a lot of juice like it's a lot of time mm. to make it and like then you have to enjoy the same you have to drink the same beer until it's all gone versus enjoying beer that other people brew snagging a four I pack could go, i could go months and not drink the same thing yeah like because there's so many there's tons that i haven't tried there's always new ones coming out like you know it, it's i enjoy the variety mm -hmm. um but there are beers like i have go-to's <gasps> You know, like if I could keep a keg of Spotted Cow behind my bar, yes. I would drink that. Okay, every yeah, I love that. It's beer. a very good beer, right? yeah. Or you know, like um, you know, over the summer, like Bill's Oberon, I really like. Um, there's plenty of things that, if 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 given the opportunity to have a large quantity of it, um, you know, I would. If I had a keg of Summer Shandy behind my bar, I would be drinking that every mm -hmm. night because like I love that beer and I could go. You know, I could drink it for weeks. Um, it's just, it's refreshing. It's light. It's, um, you know, with all the lemonade, you'll get sick before you get drunk, which is, you know, that's what I'm all about. I'm all about uh, drinking and not being intoxicated. Yeah, I don't necessarily <laughs> need to be like drunk when I'm enjoying these things. I like one drink at a time um, nowadays. You know, there's of course nights where I'll then I'll, if I have two of the craft beers, then I'm like in it, I'm in the sauce. Uh, two of the yes. pipe works will get me going for sure. But one is just like, ah, I enjoyed that for a little bit. Um, you know, I'm a little bit more, I guess, relaxed, but not, you know, I'm not intoxicated. Um, you had mentioned that class early on. You're, you're like tasting alcohols class. Yeah. Did that inspire a love in any other alcohols? It, it, it seemed to inspire your like uh, love of craft beer. I, I would say it it kind of did um you know really uh bourbon is like my thing mm -hmm. um we both enjoy craft beer um and then uh we also have the person who runs my hockey team uh, his father-in-law um they own a vineyard in uh, um napa yes. valley and my friend runs the wine bar um, in downtown Long Grove, which is like a suburb up mm -hmm. here. And so we have a love and affinity for wine now um, because that's become a spot for our hockey team to like hang out, you know, on weekends mm -hmm. and 
you know, we will probably be there a lot during the summer because they do live music and, oh, you know, it's it's just kind of atmosphere. a really good um, atmosphere and a place to hang out. Um, but I, I mean, that class, I guess it helped understand what I liked and what I didn't like. So, like, I'm not really a fan of gin. I don't know. I don't, just don't like the flavor of juniper berries at all. I think it's... Sure. It's very it's particular, yeah. Um, uh, I'm... I can drink tequila if it's in a margarita, but like I'm not a fan of like tequila shots. So tequila, tequila is not. I mean, it's not even supposed to be. It's not traditionally made and brewed to be shot. It's you know it's put into a shot glass, but you're supposed to drink that shot glass over the course of time, right? Like thirty minutes to forty minutes. It's not. It's not a shot. It's it's a sipping alcohol is how it's made anyway um and i found that when i enjoy tequila in that manner i enjoy it a lot more if i shoot tequila it's very abrasive you get a lot of like yep. a sharpie overtone that you get with some of the bourbons uh comes through <laughs> in the tequila i find as well but i i like it much better i, I don't even i don't even shoot bourbon um i prefer bourbons that you're sipping mm -hmm. um like if i'm gonna pour myself a bourbon it's going to be two or three fingers and I'm going to drink it over the course of an hour, hour and a half. Yep. yep. Um, very slow, very, you know, it's kind of my like, all right, like I'm going to sit down and just kind of hang out in a discord call and I need to go to bed. So I'm going to pour myself a bourbon and then mm -hmm. I fall asleep. Yeah, right we'll do, we'll do like the, our <laughs> shooters are like Jameson. We keep a, we keep a half a bottle yeah. of Jamo around for, a quick shot here and there with cold beer clock, but um yeah yeah i find that i think in yeah in in general i i, I find more enjoyment in the the sipping alcohols right, so uh, you said gin and tequila what is um you said bourbon is is like a you you like prefer bourbon yeah. does mary beth have like My... a preference of uh of alcohol so she i would say is like she's more like rum or flavored vodka mm -hmm. um but yeah she's just bourbon and scott like there are there are some bourbons that she will drink um much to my chagrin it's usually the ones that are oppressively expensive um you know we received a, a very nice bottle of bourbon as a closing gift for our house um, and she tried that and she was like, oh, this is really good, but it's like $130 a bottle. Um, so I don't always keep that around the house because it's just not always practical not, to go yeah. and spend like $140 on a 750 milliliter bottle of bourbon. Um, so there's like, there's some here and there that she'll like, but like, you know, for her, um, she's much more craft beer. Um, you know she'll have the occasional like if we're on a vacation she'll drink like the frozen drinks like the miami vice and pina colada and um you know we both really like frozen mojitos which are life-changing um if you can find a bartender in the summer that will make a frozen mojito frozen and mint mm. i love those i yes. love mint and in cold it just goes so well yeah. together are there um any specific um beers that you're looking forward to in like for the rest of the year we've got summer fall and winter what are your like seasonal powerhouses that you're like i know in this season comes this beer um so like summer uh if we're talking like larger breweries it's like line and kugel summer shandy oh, like a line and kugel. is like a go-to for the summer um i also will drink a lot of bills oberon over the summer it's definitely like a good My one a huge fan of bells. um new glaris they usually will do they do like one that's an arnold palmer beer and it's it's like iced tea and oh it's so good it's like iced tea and lemonade it's very refreshing Ooh. um and then it's not really craft beer, but every year, um, Natural Ice releases a summer beer called Natter Days. Natter um, Days. Last year, 
Last year, it was pineapple lemonade. The year before, it was strawberry lemonade. This year, I think it's bomb pop. Ooh, that it's called red, red. It's like red, white, and blue. And they're like $17 for a 40 pack. Um, And they're like 4% alcohol. Natter days. Incredible. So N-A-T- N-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y-S is the name of the brand. It's literally Anheuser-Busch. It's the worst thing I drink. That's like a um, summer popsicle man, beer. Man, is it like, could you have like seven or eight of them if you're drinking all day and not be drunk? And that's what I'm coming for. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, so like, that's like summer. Um, I don't know. In the fall, it's we just like transitioned to stout season. But like, I really could drink stouts year round. Mm-hmm. Like, we had a bunch of stouts yesterday, and it was like I don't mind a heavy stout even if it's hot out because it's like a cold. It's supposed to be a cold beer. If it's a warm beer, I sure I don't want it when it's hot out. But if it's like a cold beer, even if it's a heavier beer, it's nice when it's yeah. hot out. Um. So like, I don't, I don't know that I have like a fall beer. You've- but in the winter, we get like the heavy, heavy stouts. Um, so like, you know, Goose Island, Bourbon County and like all of those hard to find ones that come out around Black Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we tend to like look for those um, as the weather starts to, you know, get a little colder. And, you know, like we I have several fridges behind my bar that we usually keep pretty stocked. Um, we rotate through the seasons. So like in the summer, um we're not as likely to to get into our big like stout bottles unless we're going to a beer share and we're you know there's like 10 or 15 people there so everybody's having like an ounce or two um so like in the summer we will keep our fridges stocked with like sours and ipas and like lighter stuff that's what i feel like Um, this two uh, friend with two boats has come out to be with the orange juice it's mm -hmm. very it's very sour presenting yeah, like this beer I'm drinking now is like super refreshing. Mm-hmm. Tastes like a pina colada. Mm-hmm. It's great. Um, but like, you know, and then when it starts to get colder out, it changes to fall. It starts to get below freezing. You know, then we start looking for stouts and barrel aged beers, and you know, things to kind of keep you things to kind of keep you a little warmer. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, are you guys a fan of the like craft pumpkin beer? I enjoy the flavor of like that gourd in a beer. I don't like pumpkin. It's for whatever reason I've tried to enjoy pumpkin beer. Um, it's I like I can sometimes do pumpkin spiced ones. And I think mm-hmm. it has to do with the spice profile and not tasting the actual more pumpkin. like cinnamon and nutmeg. Yeah, but like if if it's like, I don't know, Southern Tier Warlock or Pumpkin where there's like nothing to mask the pumpkin flavor. Um, I I am not a huge fan of those. Like I would rather um, like a, a heavier adjuncted stout that like, I don't know, caramel and apples and whatever. Mm, um, caramel versus apples, like, yeah. like we had a one that was like a fall stout that had hazelnuts, um, uh, apples and uh, uh, caramel in it or something. It was really good, right? But like that would be what I would look to drink in fall. Um, I'm not a huge pumpkin fan, but I love peppermint though. Sure, Ooh, peppermint, that's a good cinnamon. approach to winter. Yeah. Um, the peppermint, cinnamon. Um, you know, I'm a huge coffee drinker, so any coffee stouts, I really like coffee stouts. Mm-hmm. Um, big fan of the coffee stouts. I like it when it tastes. When it tastes like that feeling you get off of like a very strong cup of coffee. It's like mm-hmm. almost a little gritty in the teeth. I I love that when I'm th- when I'm drinking a coffee stout. It's so good. Um, yeah, fantastic, awesome. I love that. Uh, whenever yeah, the forehands the like chocolate milk is the only one I look forward to in the winter. It is so warming. And usually I find that when things say they taste like chocolate, they do not taste like chocolate. Like it it, it tastes like a cacao bean but it depends a chocolate's hard to work with it is like peanut butter um like i mean we, we know a lot of brewers right so this is conversations that we get to have with them it's yes. when you know people that own those things sure no like um uh chocolate 
um, peanut butter is a very hard medium to work with. Um, uh, yeah, the flavor, the flavor just doesn't come across. It's almost like texture comes across in in that. Yeah, the the beer. So like, there are some beers that taste like peanut. Definitely. Butter. Um, but you have to use a lot of peanut butter. Um, there are some adjuncts that are to add additional mouthfeel, um, without adding a, a ton of a ton of flavor. Um, but you know, like chocolate is a hard one because you really can't use like chocolate squares. Right. You have to use cacao nibs, and you have to use a ton of cacao nibs for you know a five thousand gallon batch of like yeah it's a lot of beer so you have to use a lot of chocolate right like um and and some some of those ingredients fade if the beer is not stored or cellared properly so like if you have a coffee stout for example um it's best to keep those refrigerated even if you're not going to drink it right away because if you leave it in a cellar for too long the coffee flavor will fade um so you know some of those will lose a little bit of their luster um whereas if it's like vanilla and cinnamon vanilla and cinnamon will tend to stick around longer even if it's stored at you know room temperature yeah i find to, a, yeah a lot of the time with like vanilla and cinnamon the stick itself is involved too right so like the longer yeah. that it's sitting the longer it is soaking it in whereas like the cacao nib is pretty small it only has so much jam packed yeah and it's gonna event in the in when you're boiling the mix it's gonna melt mm -hmm. right like um so you know there's some that some adjuncts fade some do better like you know because if you a lot of the barrel aged beers you can keep for years and they'll continue to develop in the bottle um so the flavors will the barrel flavor will much like a bourbon um or a wine or whatever will mellow out with you know a year or two and then you'll have a completely different beer when you open it in two years versus opening it the second you buy it um, yeah you know it's not always a good move to buy something and open it right away because sometimes it just tastes like a bourbon barrel and you're like oh my god like we should have i guess that's why i've <laughs> never like i've worked in fine dining and restaurants from anywhere from like a neighborhood neighborhood italian restaurant to like high-end michelin and yeah. um it it has always intrigued me the process of beer because like most alcohols have a one process for that alcohol there is like like bourbon and wine the longer it goes in that initial sitting phase the the more intense and and unique and like individualized you know flavor profile will come across whereas like in beer it seems uh that it's like some are meant to be drank right away like we brew it it's drink now or it's like we brew it and then we sit it for x amount of time it's 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 an interesting that the the change in uh, i think like care of an alcohol uh changes in this like well and, and sometimes we'll buy more than one bottle of something because like it's interesting to to drink one when you first get mm -hmm. it and see what it tastes like and then you op you'll open one a year later and you'll be like oh wow like this was supposed to be coconut and this ingredient but this ingredient faded a little bit and now you just have this really pleasant coconut flavor or you know so it really it's interesting sometimes to like open something one year and then try it and then try the same thing again 12 months later and have it be completely different than the first time you tried it. Um, it, it but you don't get that with a lot of other things, right? It's really only it's red wine and it's beer. Like you're not going to sit there and age a white wine for 10 years. It doesn't it doesn't continue to develop, but you can do it with barrel aged beer. You could do it with wine because you know it's it's continuing to eat on the additional sugar um which is why those pastry stouts are so cool because there's so much sugar mm -hmm. in them that as they age the ingredients will take on a different profile because it starts another fermentation yeah right and then you some of the flavors mellow and other ones become more intense it's, yeah. it's, it's really neat 
but it is hard to buy something with the intention of not drinking it right that's away. tough that's um, tough that's a skill my it's a skill you have my to goal learn. one day is a a, a, a seller the, of like half you know old red wines that i've bought and half like kegs of beer that i can keep and like it is meant to be cellared for an amount of time um i i probably have about a hundred bottles in my cellar yes so i keep do you have like old uh, do you have any old beers in there that that maybe you're you're not even thinking of like opening but is good because it's an it, it's just like even almost a collector you know do you have any like um, collector i models? mean I, I open them eventually so i have like a f six year vertical of regular bourbon county so what is that 2015 through 2021 yeah something like that i might even have a seven-year vertical of bourbon county um I, I either have it i either have it starting at 2015 right now or 2016 it might start at 2016 so 16 17 and is 18, that 19, you 20. got it in 2015 or is that it was yeah. oh okay so you've had it for seven years what yep. is there a, a life on that like is there like after x amount of years it's it's i i, I wait, Some, waited too long the 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 15 or 16 i probably should open soon um goose island says that they'll age for about five years in the bottle um so generally we'll wait until we have like a big party and we'll open like all five of them mm. um i also have a four year vertical of like regular three floyds dark lord um so i mean there's a few bottles i have that are you know sub uh 2015s um i do have a cantian bottle um those actually will age in the bottle for 10 years Ooh, um 10 and years. i think i the cantian i have is from 2019 um and i still haven't opened it yet i think i'm gonna wait another year or two um and then it'll probably be drinking really good because it's their it's their non-adjuncted no additives no ingredients sour um and they they age very very nicely um i wrote the year on it in gold marker and i just put it at the back of my my shelf where i keep all my beer and every now and again i look what at it and i'm like oh, maybe i'll open it repeat the, the like, kind nah. of sour you said non-adjuncted what it's it's just a it's just a sour there's no fruit in it there's no ingredients in it it's just a wild fermented what sour beer. i truly thought until you said that that what made a sour a sour was the fruit in being involved in the process no it's the style of fermentation same so, ingredients um, just like fermented differently so wild fermentation so like cantian the way that they ferment their beer is it's in made in the same way that they would make peat moss for scotch mm -hmm. so they make the beer they put it in a barn and they let they let it ferment in the open air so the yeast they don't put yeast in it the yeast is like naturally occurring from the air and pollen and like it literally like it's wild it's fermented. Like sour air. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's it's really neat. And they've been making beer that way for like, you know, two hundred years. Blown away. Um still make it the same way. Um, you know, I mean they they may put yeast in it to make it. Yeah, sure, like obviously sure. it's got some, but like they put a little yeast in there, um, but a lot of it comes from but the, the sourness the, comes from the the open the wild ferment be, being out in the in, in the in the wild. That's yeah. it's so really cool. intriguing. You know, I, I and they're one of the few places that do it that I way. I thought all week I was like, I'm 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 pleased that Toxic is or that that Matt is doing a, a subject that I will be able to talk a little bit on because I've had a little bit of approach to it, and I was like, this is good. Yeah starting with a topic that I at least know. And and like through this time, I've learned just a ton about beer in general already. Just yeah. like a new, I think, view on the crafting of craft beer. Um, that's very interesting. You're definitely gonna have to give me an update if you ever get to Belgium because I'm interested in monk beer. And so oh, I want to like, I really need to bad. know what a, what a, a monk whose whole shtick is fucking brewing this beer for his life. I need to know it's, for their life. It's what the, the 
monk is the entire the, monastery. Sure. So like, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, so like, uh, um, the most popular one would be West Vlederen. Um, they make one of the best Belgian uh, quadruple ales in the or triple ales in the um, in the world. Um, you can probably order it online and have it shipped um but uh, getting it from it's the very, source yeah well, yeah you can order it you can have it shipped there there are, there's like all these web belgium in a box is one of them um uh there's another site called beer gm where you can get uh beer from europe and they'll send it to you it's it's kind of cool it takes weeks to get here because it's got to sit in customs yeah but, customs sucks um, right ordered now. From them. I've ordered from them several times and you know it, it's a, it's attainable but like West Vlederen is like a Trappist monastery that brews beer and they instead of asking for donations um, they operate by selling the beer that they produce so they they don't make they don't really drink it they make enough to sell and then that's how they keep the monastery open um, St. Sixtus is another one um, St. Bernardus is another one those are all Trappist. Um, and how long have places like these places been brewing their beers? Hundreds, hundreds of years. Long time. Long, long, longer than uh, yeah, a long time. Are we talking like predating America? So West Vlederen Monastery has been making beer since 1838. Wow almost uh, 200 years yeah i'm not sure about cantian but i, I wonder up. what the oldest like if you were to go there and say like you know you know express your interest in craft beer express your interest in these experiences i wonder what the oldest beer that if you had no say money cap you could try there is just like, hey, I want your oldest stock that's still possibly good. I'm not sure. Cantian started in 1900. Okay, okay. Dang, that's so, so they, old. they've been brewing for 120 years. Two, 122 years almost. That's mind blowing. That's, I mean, yes, I will definitely ask for an update when you go on that trip. However long in the to. future, you, you know, know, it's dream trip. It's, um, it's definitely something I want to mm -hmm. do, but the problem is like, I, I don't want to just go to one place in Europe. So then you feel like you got to spend time other places, mm -hmm. but like, I feel like to do that trip, right. You need to spend like four days in Belgium. Cause there's so many places to go, you know, right in that immediate area. You know, there's Dre Fontenin, there's Cantillon, there's West Vlederen, St. Mm -hmm. Sixtus, St. Bernardus, like, there's like 10 or 12 like and these places have been making beer longer than you know almost as long as well maybe not as long as germany germany is definitely the oldest um you know they've been i think the rhine hikes goodbye it was like 1438 uh german beer purity law i actually did my paper on the german beer purity law uh it, for my for culinary school yes so Yes, I did my beverage appreciation final paper on the Rheinheitsgebiet, which was signed in eighteen or fifteen sixteen, the German beer purity law, which says that in Germany, in order to be considered beer, it has to contain only four ingredients. It cannot contain anything else: water, hops, yeast, barley. Anything else is considered a malt beverage in Germany. I it's a remembered law there. hearing, learning about that when I was working in Michelin. The four, the four yeah. ingredients. We had a few beers that did and were like proudly, ho like you know, proudly they had been doing that recipe for since before that law was you know in place. Because there was a few, right? There was a few, I think, in Germany that were all of them. Well, no, no, no that were all doing it before that law yeah. and then they came together yeah. with like the the lawmakers of the time and got that to be a law so that their breweries could be top of the, the yeah the every line. every german brewery now and i've been to oktoberfest once but every in germany brewery, yes every brewery now in germany produces beer the same mm -hmm. way um it's nice because like you don't really get a hangover because there's no 
sugars well, yeah no additives the, the bad sugars. so like if you get if you're hungover after drinking and you and keep in mind at oktoberfest there's one size it's like the big one um you, you know you're you're you have a headache for like an hour and then you go eat and you're like well i could go drink more i guess like yeah i'm ready to go back again <laughs> put me back in coach it's weird they're like seven percent beers and like it goes down like it's a summer beer mm. like you may as well be drinking summer shandy over there i don't know if it's the air i don't know if it's because everybody's just having a good time but like man they are very strong and they go down very easy so. hell yeah awesome well i think that we have talked about i think that we've thoroughly broken down uh our the topic brought today you know the the topic of of what brings you in your life pure joy um we've talked about some craft beer i even had to run next door and pick up craft beer because i was into the conversation so much i just wanted to join in well there you go I'm glad you enjoyed it yeah fantastic well that's great um you know, if you want, I you, like a p moment to uh, do any sort of plug. I know that you you do your podcast. You did your your second episode today. Um... Sure. Uh, so yeah, uh, everybody. Um, again, I am Toxic Killer Fifty. Um, I stream about five days a week, Wednesday through Sunday. That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do a podcast once a month. Uh, it's called Teachable Moments with Toxic. Uh, right now, we are going over um, different streaming-related topics. Today's episode was about using social media and editing clips. Um, our next episode will air. I have to push it back another week because we are going to my in-laws um it will be on the last sunday of june so june 26th 1 p.m central standard time um and we'll be going over um obs so any questions that you have about how to do certain t tricks or setting up scenes or anything like that um within obs uh we will we will kind of be answering those questions um, I, I do a lot of really fun content um come by the channel sometime everybody is welcome uh we have we have a lot of fun fantastic all right well it was great having you on thank you for being uh, our first guest here of course have a wonderful you too night. my friend i'll catch you around and as for all of you let's switch over to here i want to say thank you thank you so much for joining on in the stream tonight it has been an absolutely fantastic time. We will be back again every other week to continue uh, with this podcast. It will just be a like this, right? Every guest will have their own thing that brings them joy. They'll talk about it a little bit, and then we will, you know, we'll break it down. I'll I'll dig in. Um, we're gonna try a couple different approaches to it and see what kind of like works best as we refine in these early stages, but. I want to thank you all for, for coming out, being a part of this. Come join us June 5th for our next episode with Kaokin Adrian. Um, we'll find out what his topic is on that day. Um, and this will be, like I said, a bi-weekly exploration. So you can find us on June 5th with Kaokin Adrian. And then on June 19th, two weeks after that, with the Rake Song 42, my close friend Gabe, whom I've known for for, for many years. Final. Thank you so much for joining us here on our Pure Joy podcast. We will see you again in two weeks.